In last week's video, I talked about Affinity Photo for the iPad, and even though I didn't do a full-blown review, I talked about a lot of the features, but I left a lot out, and I got a lot of really good questions about some of the things I left out, so that's what we're talking about today. First up, you can totally import brushes and brush packs. Shameless plug, I just happened to create a free set of brushes for Affinity Photo myself. He's totally right. I said that that feature was coming in the future, but it's already here. You can import brushes from Affinity Photo on the desktop right now, and if you just want some to test out, I'm going to link to his down below. They're free and you should try them. A couple folks like Vicky Kloper took it a little bit further. She's been experimenting with Kyle's brushes, exporting those from Photoshop and then importing them into Affinity Photo. She mentions in the comments that this works pretty well, but they don't perform exactly the same way they do in Photoshop. It's a multi-step process, so I figured might as well run through it here really quickly. So here I am in Photoshop and I'm going to grab a brush that I want to export. Now I'm going to grab one of Kyle's brushes, which aren't actually brushes, but are tool presets and I already have a watercolor brush here uh, I'll use it over here so you can see you know kind of what that looks like it's a nice watercolor brush it's got some nice hard edges to it some nice wet edges to it so let's export this in order to do that first I need to take it from being a tool and turn it into a brush so I'm gonna go over here to my brushes presets I'm going to go ahead and open that up and since that tool is already selected all I have to do is go down here to this create a new brush icon and when I tap that it's going to give me this option this is ca called Kyle wet edge uh, I'm just going to remove the number two and I'm going to click OK and there it is it is now officially a real brush now all I have to do is export it so this is pretty easy as well if I go up here uh, I can click on these little lines here, which brings up additional options. And from here, I'm going to go to my preset manager. I think you can usually skip that step, but it's going to show me all my brushes that I have here. And down here is the brush that I just created. Once I have that selected, or I could select multiple brushes if I wanted to by holding down shift or control. I don't want to. All I want to do is select one in this case. But if you want to, you know, import several at once, you can definitely do that. I'm going to select this one. I'm going to say save set and I'm going to save this. I'll call it Kyle's brush. Spelled that wrong. There we go. Kyle's brush. And I'm going to go ahead and click save. I'm saving that in Dropbox because I want to save it somewhere where I can get to it on my iPad. You can save it to iCloud. You can save it to Google Drive, whatever you want to use to then pull it onto your iPad. So now that we're done here, I just need to go to my iPad and go to Affinity Photo and we can pull it in there. All right, now that we are in Affinity Photo on the iPad, I can import this brush. And over on the right hand side, I have all my menus. I'm gonna tap on my brush menu, which will pull out all of my brushes. And from here, there is a little three line menu at the very top right corner of that palette. If I tap on that, it gives me some options. One of those options is very easily, it is import brushes. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that. And it's uh, gonna default me to iCloud Drive because that was probably the last thing that I used, but I want to go over to Dropbox. So I tap on locations in the upper right-hand corner. And of course, this is gonna be different for you if you're using Google Drive or OneDrive or something like that. Wherever you saved it is where you're gonna pull it in from. I saved mine in Dropbox, so I tap on that. We'll open this up. I have way too many Dropbox folders here. Tap on illustration scroll down to brushes and there is kylesbrush.abr that is the file that i just saved on my desktop a minute ago so i'm going to go ahead and tap on that it's going to take a couple seconds to download it downloading from iCloud and there it is i can select this brush and i can use it here and you see i have my uh, watercolor brush going on now it behaves a little bit differently in an affinity photo than it does in photoshop you're going to find that with a lot of kyle's brushes the more simple brushes are going to work pretty well um, this is going to pull over some of the attributes that you have in photoshop but not all of them for example if i turn on the pressure sensitivity it's just going to change the size it's not going to change the opacity if i turn on the wet edge part it started to look more like the watercolor brush that we had in photoshop but but not exactly. So the short answer is yes, we can definitely pull in Photoshop brushes, but not all of them are gonna pull over the same way and behave the same way as they do in Photoshop. This was the number one question that I got about Affinity Photo, which is, is it better than Procreate? That's a really hard question to answer because they're both so different. I'm gonna go out and say, uh, for me, no, it's not. Procreate is much more streamlined, it's much simpler. It's built specifically for drawing. It has the workflow of an illustrator in mind and because 
of that, I just like it better. Affinity Photo has way more tools, and so there's going to be a lot of people who enjoy the masking tools, who enjoy the vector tools, who enjoy like all of those things, the shape tools and things like that, that you just can't quite get in Procreate. So a lot of folks are gonna really like that stuff that, uh, that Procreate doesn't provide. But I think for just like the pure drawing and sketching, stuff, I still pretty much prefer Procreate. It's just really gonna come down to what you like and what you need in a drawing program. And Procreate's only six bucks, and it's probably the best six dollars I have ever spent. If you just spent a couple hundred dollars on an iPad, What's six more dollars? Go get a really nice drawing program. This is a long comment, but I wanted to pull out one specific thing, which I think is a really good point I didn't mention in my review. Affinity Photo for the iPad won't offer, at this time, support for third-party smart Bluetooth styli. Is it styli or styluses? I don't know. The point here is, is the only thing you can really use is either your finger or the Apple Pencil. For those of you who already have a Bluetooth stylus, maybe don't have an iPad Pro, that's just something you should keep in mind before purchasing this app. You're gonna find it's a little bit handicapped in that area, and it's something that I wish I had mentioned in my review is probably a big deal to a lot of people out there. Gouache is the word slash pronunciation you're looking for. When I was looking through the brushes in the last video and I was just tapping through and reading them, I slaughtered that word. It's one of those words that I see written all the time in art apps and on websites that I never really had to say it out loud until I was on camera. Can you animate in it? Not really. Uh, it doesn't have any like animation features. You could create something and then export it into an animation program. Uh, you could totally do something like that. Uh, assets for an animation program, yes. But doing the actual animating, no, it's not really built for that. Hey Brad, did you hear about the Eve V? I have heard about the Eve V. It's very, very similar to the Surface, but it is a crowd-funded computer, laptop, tablet thing. It looks really promising. Like all products that I haven't used that come with a pen, I'm a little bit skeptical. I have no idea, like, is the pen any good? Is it kind of flighty? Is it kind of goofy? Is it, did they cheap out on that aspect of it to make it better in other areas? I'm not really sure. The video sure looks cool. I hope that someday I can get my hands on it. Right now, they don't sell it through any conventional stores. You have to, like, pre-order it and get in line and stuff like that. I don't know if they're giving out review units. So I don't know if I'm going to be taking a look at one anytime in the near future, uh, but if it gets really good reviews from other third-party sites, it's something I'll probably check out. Where is your new Surface Pro review? The review is nowhere to be found, but the Surface Pro, I have it in my hands here and I am working on it. The pen is sold separately this year. It's not bundled in and it took me a little longer to actually get my hands on a pen, but I don't have a ton of like client work this week, so I'm hoping to get it out by Wednesday or Thursday. That is my Q&A for the day. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. As always, you can hit me up on Twitter, and I'd like to thank everybody who supports me over on Patreon. Much appreciated. I'll talk to you guys in a few days.